Okay, here we have question number 21 from May, June 2008. Um, paper 2, variant 1. Question 21, the very last question on the paper. Okay, this is a question to do with three-dimensional trigonometry. And they've given us a five-mark question, as you can see here, where there's no scaffolding. They have basically to build your, find your own way to answer this question. Okay, so there's a few steps involved, which they don't actually give any clues for. So now, what do they tell us here? They told us that A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and B, F, C, B, E, F, C, B, E, F, C, and A, E, F, D are all rectangles. Now that's important. They are all rectangles. Okay, so if they're all rectangles, that will give us an idea <coughs> of certain things. For example, the opposite sides are equal and parallel. All the angles are 90 degrees. As you can see, some of them are marked already. Okay, for these three rectangles. Now, A, B, C, D is horizontal. B, E, F, C is vertical. So that gives us an idea that this angle, this angle, these angles are 90 degrees. Okay. And A, E, F, C, A, E, F, D represents a hill size. So that's sloping upwards. So it's a three-dimensional diagram. It says A, F is a path on the hillside. So it's a path going up the hill from A up to F. A, D equals 800 um, sorry, meters. And uh, six D, E, D, C is 600 meters. And C, F is 200 meters. Now we are asked to calculate the angle that the path AF makes with A, B, C, D. So basically what they're asking us to do is to find the angle between this line and the plane A, B, C, D. So the question is essentially finding the angle between a line and a plane. That's what the question is actually asking us to do. So what we can do here is we can take, um, we can draw a line that joins together A and C. Why do I draw the line A, and a to C? Because the angle between the line AF and the plane ABCD is the angle between the line AF and the line AC. It's the angle uh, CAF. It's the angle CAF. Okay, this is the angle that we need to find. Okay, you can think of it if there was a light shining from above and this was like a stick and this is like, you know, some sort of transparent type of shape here. Um, where would the shadow of this stick fall on this plane? Well, it will fall from A up to C. So the angle between the line and the plane is like the angle between the line and its shadow on the plane. Okay, and that's one way of thinking about it. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to find this angle. I'm going to call it angle X. We need to find the value of the angle X. Now, what we have here is a rectangle. I'm going to draw a little rectangle over here. I'm going to draw everything up here so we can see what's going on. Uh, if I keep going up and down from the space below, really you should do this work in the space below because you can see what's happening. But because the screen here is small, I'm going to just make the shape on this part here so that we can see exactly what's going on. So now we have a triangle. That that represents triangle A, C, F. This is the right angle, and this is the, the angle X, C, A, F, which we have to find. Now in this triangle, we we can see this must be a right angle, as I mentioned, because this is a line going along the horizontal plane A, B, C, D, and this is the vertical uh, line C, F, the, the plane E, E, F, C, B, C, sorry, B, E, F, C. This plane is vertical and this plane is horizontal, so there must be an angle of 90 degrees between them. So A, C, F is, must be, it must be a right angle. So we have a right angle triangle, and we know that uh, the line between C and F is 200 meters. Okay, that's the line over here. We need to find one other length on this triangle, and then we can find the angle X using right angle triangle trigonometry. So, Katoa. Now, <coughs> we don't have another line on this triangle. However, 
we do have some measurements on the base okay which is this rectangular base a b c d now i'm going to draw a rectangle here so we can see and i'm going to imagine that we're drawing this rectangle or we're looking at this rectangle from like um, a plan view from above okay so you've got 800 and 600 meters so we'll draw it slightly wider there and this is basically your a this is your b this is your c and this is your d this is 600 meters and this is 800 meters okay let me just sit down a bit all right now what i know here is this is a rectangle and i know that ac is a length on this triangle that i need and it's also a length on this rectangle so if i join a and c together I actually need this length to find what AC is here. Basically, I need this length and I've got AC and therefore I can find the angle. So the key now is to find what AC is. Okay, this is AC. I'm just going to do the steps over here. So I know that AC is equal to the square root of, you've got 100, 800 squared plus 600 squared. Now, if you calculate that in your calculator, you end up with the square root of, um, the square root of is going to have it's going to be 64,000 64 and you're going to have four zeros and you're going to have 36 you're going to have four zeros right you're going to have 36 and four zeros and 64 and four zeros 800 plus 600 when you add them together you're going to get your four zeros and then this adds up to 100 so you have another zero and another zero and one so you end up with 1 million and the square root of 1 million the square root of 1 million okay 1 times 10 to the power of 6 is 1 times 10 to the power of 3 which is a thousand so I know that AC is 1000 meters so this is the AC that I'm looking for 1000 meters okay so now I can find the angle I need I'm just going to do that over here so I know the tangent of the angle X is equal to opposite which is 200 over 1000 okay which basically gives you one fifth so the tangent of angle x is one fifth so x is equal to inverse tan of one fifth arc tan one fifth so x will give you the angle we go to our calculator and we make sure that the calculator is in a degree mode okay this is in some other mode right now. It's um, okay. So we're going to have it's in degree mode, it's in radian mode. So I've got to change the mode to degree mode, shift mode, and I'm going to go three. That's degree. Very very careful about that. It should be in degree mode. And I'm I'm trying to find shift tan of one fifth. So you're going to say shift tan of one over five of the bracket. So one divided by five, which is zero point two actually. Oops. 1 divided by 5 and that gives us our answer which is 11.3099 so I have 11.3099 11.3099 so my answer for the angle that we need is 11.3 degrees 11.3 degrees and there we have the answer to part A I've done it all in this space at the top okay and then I'm going to do part B in a minute